Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Explosions near military base in Jordan kill two, injure three others. US announces withdrawal of thousands of its troops from Iraq. China and India agree to disengage troops and defuse tension at the border. Rio Tinto CEO resigns over outrage following destruction of ancient Aboriginal caves. On Friday, a series of massive explosions in Jordan killed at least two people and injured three others. The explosions repeated, reportedly occurred at an army munitions depot in the Al Gabawi area on the outskirts of Zarqa city. This is northeast of the Jordanian capital Amman. The area is home to several Jordanian army bases as well as a newly built airfield. The depot lies considerable distance away from civilian populated areas of the city. The explosions caused massive flames and a subsequent orange cloud of smoke which were visible from 35 kilometers away. It also resulted in the shattering of windows of the homes of many residents of the city. Following the explosion, security forces stopped all vehicular traffic to and from the city. Journalists were also denied entry to the site of the explosions. Jordan's Minister of State for Media Affairs, Ajmaj Adale, issued a statement to the press stating that the explosion was caused by an electrical circuit malfunction in the depot. He also added that the motor bombs that were stored in the depot were old and unusable. However, according to an anonymous source of the Jordanian army, the site was also storing some precision-guided anti-aircraft missiles. The Sarga governorate had suffered from several such explosions in the previous years due to the many munitions depots and warehouses situated in the vicinity. Now, next story on Wednesday, the US military announced a withdrawal of 2,200 of its troops from Iraq. This will significantly reduce the total number of US troops in the country from 5,200 to 3,000. The Trump administration has attempted to portray the move as the fulfillment of one of its central promises before the upcoming presidential election scheduled in November. In June, the US and Iraqi governments had agreed to significantly reduce the number of troops in the country. The US has also agreed to not have any permanent base in Iraq. The move is also due to the rising popular pressure within Iraq to withdraw all foreign troops from the country following the US assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani and Iraqi commander Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis in January. After the assassination, the Iraqi parliament passed a resolution asking all foreign troops to withdraw from the country. In response to the assassination of General Soleimani, Iran had launched massive missile attacks on the camps in Iraq where American forces were deployed. Iranian leadership had also declared that it would not rest until all US troops were expelled from the Middle East region. Welcoming the news of the withdrawal, American anti-war movement Code Pink came out with a statement saying that Trump's Iraq announcement and the timing of it is a recognition in this election season that the American people are sick and tired of two decades of destructive, costly and senseless wars in the Middle East. On Thursday, after a standoff lasting months along the disputed Himalayan border, the foreign ministries of China and India agreed in a joint statement that their troops would disengage. The Chinese ministry said that the two countries reached a five-point consensus on reducing tension in the area. Tensions have been high since May after India alleged that Chinese troops had encroached into areas patrolled by the Indian soldiers for decades in the region. Since then, soldiers from both countries have periodically skirmished along the contested border which is called the line of actual control. But relations further deteriorated in recent days after China on Tuesday accused Indian troops of illegally crossing the border and firing warning shots at patrolling Chinese soldiers. India and China fought a border war in 1962. Both countries continued to lay claim to thousands of square kilometers of territory in that area. China's foreign ministry said that it would commit to restoring peace and tranquility in the disputed border in a separate statement. Since the statement, high-ranking military officials of both sides have met to discuss de-escalation. The CEO of the global mining company Rio Tinto, jean Sebastian Jacques, and two other senior executives have resigned from the company after public outrage over the destruction of 46,000-year-old rock shelters in Australia. In May, the company blew up the rock shelters which were highly significant to the area's Aboriginal traditional communities. The destruction was carried out with the aim of mining quality iron ore from the area. The caves had also shown evidence of continuous human habitation dating back to 46,000 years and was seen as one of Australia's most significant archaeological research sites. Artifacts found at the caves included a 4,000-year-old belt made of plated human hair, the DNA testing of which had directly linked it to the communities living in the region. Following the destruction, a representative of the community, John Ashburton, said that losing the site was a devastating blow and there are less than a handful of known Aboriginal sites in Australia as old as this one. The decision to let the CEO could come after months of ongoing pressure from Aboriginal groups, traditional communities and activists. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar, a